Hey, you're at Steve Morris Engines. I'm Steve, and uh, I got something a little bit different for you. And actually, I'm kind of excited about it because it's pretty rare that I get to do anything specifically for uh, myself. And so, uh, I'm going to show you an entire buildup of my own personal SMX engine. Now, this one isn't mine, this one's a customer's. Uh, so, we're going to go right from the start of everything and uh, right from ground up of uh, putting the cam bearings in it on up to the complete. And uh, I thought maybe you guys would get a uh, like to see the complete engine build up on uh, something really cool. So, anyways, uh, we're gonna start it out right now. All right, and here is the platform of everything, the SMX block. So, what I'll show you here is first thing. We'll I'll, I'll just go over everything because I don't think uh, uh, a lot of people really know what's going on, and most people wouldn't honestly. So it's no big deal. Um, so this is our, our block, obviously. Now this is water jacketed, solid billet, but this is endurance water jacketed, obviously. So let's just go right from the front. So this is a, uh, it's 4840 bore spacing. It has a Hemi front, basically a Hemi front, and then big block Chevrolet back. So I guess you could say that, okay? So as you can see here, the whole timing set, everything that's up through here. Now this is the block I've already just got done, deburring it, uh, clearancing it for stroke, just down at the bottom of the sleeves, um, making and finishing the cylinder uh, bore and hone and notches. So you see here, there's a exhaust valve notch. And then up on this side, a little harder to see, right there and boy you can't hardly see it let's see it is a intake valve notch just right there intake valve notch so you can see the deck height is 10 400 uh, I use a 904 uh, bearingless lifter uh, in these combinations and I could use a big keyway uh keyway style uh lifter and do like a 937 or 1031 or uh 1 100 i mean there's a lot of different options there but uh this works i've proven it works it's easier i like the way it oils better because we are doing this for endurance we are not uh doing it for any other application other than endurance and super high horsepower endurance uh, i just know it works and i kind of stick with it could something else work? Also, possible. That's possible. Um, four five hundred bore. As you can see here, these are the receiver grooves for the cylinder head, for the fire ring, for the SMX hoops. So the fire ring goes in there. So all these things are all part of. Uh, if you wanted to see something on on lifters, I explain lifters in my Steve Tech videos. I explain this whole hoop process, the SMX hoop. Uh, fire ring process how that all works so you can always go back and just see so I'm just telling you what this is I'm not going to re-explain everything that I've already done in a Steve Tech video um, this is 65 millimeter core camshaft too all right so uh, and it uses a Babbitt bearing currently so Babbitt bearings one through four and then this is the rear cam bearing. So you use this rear cam bearing like uh, right here because this starts, or I'm sorry, this also sets camshaft thrust. Uh, it's part of the thrust process uh, in the rear journal. So I will, uh, uh, as we get into installing camshaft, I'll go over that with you. So I'm gonna put the cam bearings in it here, uh, oil galley plugs and uh, start the assembly and as I'm going through it I'll just go over every single thing through you. Now what we see here too is uh, I'll start from water in so you get a good explanation of water in. So this is covered by a plate and water goes in right here. So water goes in the front of the block there's a small transfer 
through the front that just cools the front side of this cylinder and then has a bleed hole up through the, the exit, but I'll, there's not much going on there. Water comes in here, follow a cylinder line, goes to the back of the block, transfers through the entire back, right through here, these holes, and then goes into the front, or into the lifter valley side through these holes, all right, which gets you into the lifter valley. So these hole water has gone across it back here, then goes right straight through all the way behind these welded plates. Now we're working on the new block will be uh, all bolted in plates. Uh, these versions were uh, welded in plates. So we're working on new stuff there. And then water comes out here, all right? So, and it's the same on both sides. So water in here goes around, around the outside, around the outside of the back, then comes up through the front and then out right here. So each side of the block is completely separate. So there is water in, water out. On the other side of the block, there is water in, water out. So if you look over on this side, they are not combined. They're not touching each other. And then never, or there's no crossover. There's no crossover in the head and there's no crossover in, in the block. Also notice that there is no water through the deck surface. The deck surface is no water transfer. That's why we need to have water in, water out, and then up on the head that I'll show you later is water in right here, water out right above it. And it does the exact same kind of watering through the cylinder head. I'll show you that as we get to the cylinder heads. So we've covered uh, deck height. The, the main journal size is Big Block Chevrolet. Uh, uses a Hemi pin. Uh, so the 2375 journal pin. I'll show you more things on the crankshaft as we get there. Uh, but this is the block. Uh, bell housing patterns, a dual bell housing pattern for, for Chrysler Hemi and for Big Block Chevrolet. Obviously we use it in Big Block Chevrolet. Uh, this is a lifter scavenge. If people wanted to scavenge out of the lifter valley, uh, I give that option. Now, the way oiling system works, people need to always verify how oiling systems actually work. Oil goes in the, in, into the block right here. So right on this front panel right here, we have different variations, different oil pumps. Uh, oil comes up through this passage, this passage right here. So right there is our oil in, comes up here, transfers to the main oil galley. Let me lower the camera down here just a little bit. Sorry about the camera work here. Here, I'll just take the camera off. So, as you can see, the uh, this is our main oil galley from the oil pump. Comes up here. Now this transfers through a hole right here. This is the main oil galley. This oil galley feeds all the uh, main journals, which feeds crankshaft, obviously crosses over, feeds cam bearing, just like a traditional Chevrolet does. This also goes up and feeds this one lifter galley. Now, you'll always see in all of my SMX blocks, there is a oil feed hole here and an oil feed hole here because this lifter valley is the only lifter valley that is pressure fed. There's nothing over here until we run a line dash six line from here over to here and here over to there. So that is how we oil this lifter galley and i.e. the cylinder head and all the valve train on this side. So oil comes up, reiterate, main galley, priority main oiling, goes up to the lifter uh, galley, lifter galley then 
crosses over from this lifter galley to the other lifter galley with a uh, external line right here, right here. I feed it in the front and the back so it, it has nice equal distribution, uh, trying to not have low volume or low uh, pressure spots in the oil galley. Um, so uh, that is the block. Oh, now these, these sleeves too, now th I do these sleeves differently. This sleeve is uh, this thick. This is not just a step. This step uh, is actually two inches down into the cylinder. So this entire ring land, or I'm sorry, this entire high pressure area in the cylinder is thickest uh, sleeve possible. And then go from about my finger down, the rest of it is normal thin sleeve. Now, as you can also see, there is nowhere in here on any of my in, any of the block that the cylinder bore, except at the head bolt holes, are uh, has less than about three quarters of an inch of material. So, trying for maximum rigidity in the cylinder bore itself. Now, the other thing that you see is this. Uh, well, let's backtrack. Wow, that's awesome. Can I? I'm gonna get that block and I'm gonna put my heads on it. No, you're not. Your heads aren't gonna fit on my block. The only heads that fit on my block are my cylinder heads, period. Because this head bolt hole right here is a totally different deal. Now this head bolt hole, I'll show you later, in cylinder heads, this head bolt hole goes all the way down into a solid portion behind the lifter galley oil hole uh, into the block right here and gives us a full half inch head stud, just like half inch head stud, half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, uh, instead of like uh, the other version of the solid motors um, and like a, a standard uh, 481X type motor that would just have a small 3 8 bolt right here running up beside the intake port. This is a half inch head stud that runs through the center of the uh, intake port in fact, you have to take a cap out of the top of the intake port to access that head stud, which is at the floor of the intake port. So all really cool stuff. I'm very proud of uh, this whole deal. Um, obviously, all, uh, obviously all solid built. This is the, the camshaft, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the cam sink, so i.e. distributor. Uh, obviously, I don't run a distributor in it, but this is the cam sink slash oil pump drive. So this oil pump drive goes all the way right down through there so here's the gear would be right here i'll show you all that stuff goes through and drives an oil pump if we have a black mounted oil pump on it like i said i have several different versions of oil pumps for these uh depending on what you need so anyways that's the block and i'll just do some uh slow motion uh, uh or high speed photography on video on uh, just putting the cam brains in and starting the whole uh, build process on this Now here I'll stop and I'll also show you because I didn't show you the bottom end. So this is a, uh, a splayed cap block instead of a cross bolted block. Look up yield strength versus shear strengths on uh, uh, fastening hardware, bolts, etc. And you'll see what I mean. And because what I do is uh, this cap like this. So this cap right here, these are billet aluminum. So this cap is spreading the or pulling load from all the way right down here in this really super meaty part of this whole block versus just being cross bolted okay versus just being a cross bolt through there cross bolts shear right off right this is actually pulling from the bulkhead area so this angle split or the splayed bolt is going all the way down into this super high meat area right through there so that's why I do that with these billet aluminum caps. Why do we use billet aluminum instead of steel? Because they're perfectly strong. They work perfectly well. They have the same expansion rate. Uh, I think that just is a better deal. And uh, if you break this cap, you got far bigger problems than what a, a billet steel cap would have ever saved you.
Now, one of the things you may, may be asking is, well, why don't you use a roller bearing, a uh, drawn needle cup bearing for the camshaft, roller cam journals, because we have that one, uh, ro uh, shoot, can't remember what it's called, what style of bearing it is. Anyways, that one r rear roller bearing that's in the back and then uh, would be able to use and we are working on possibly doing it. But uh, believe it or not, the Babbitt bearings, when they're running, when they have oil, uh, there does not seem to be, and that could be wrong, but does not seem to be any uh, direct advantage of uh, friction when there's oil there. But I will tell you that a Babbitt bearing motor with big roller cam, big springs, versus a uh, roller cam motor, uh, roll over just cranking or in the rollover, extremely lighter, like by, oh, like this engine will take about 130 pounds to, to roll over, about, 100, about 120 to 130 pounds of uh, torque to turn over, uh, cold, uh, not full, you know, uh, not pumped up with oil pressure, just like cranking. Uh, it'll be less than half of that with the roller bearing in there. But when this thing is running, and the uh when it is running and there's an oil film there they seem to be the same um so pretty interesting stuff i am working on doing a roller bearing conversion for this but there is no proper good bearing for 65 millimeter in the bore sizes i need ids i need ods i need and width that i need so i'm probably going to do a little bit of a camshaft change to use a common bearing so i don't have to reinvent the wheel uh, I don't like reinventing the wheel on stuff. So it's going to be something we're going to do, but only for the standpoint of doing a little more oil control. So oil control, they're great. I uh, don't have any problem with them. They run them on drag week type stuff. They run great. But I'm, I'm always amazed at how this little skinny uh, bearing with uh, just oil pressure works and works well. So anyways, uh, just showing you that. So I'll uh, grab a camshaft and we're going to uh, just test fit the camshaft in there after we test fit it. Then we'll uh, start on the crankshaft stuff. Now this is the that 65 millimeter camshaft that I was talking about. Now if you want to know more about this camshaft, actually you can go on my camshaft videos on Steve Tech. See the small journal up on top there. There you go. Small journal for that big roller bearing. Babbitt, 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 Babbitt. And then this is the whole nose front with distributor gear for turning the fuel pump slash cam sink and all that good stuff. And the uh, timing gear, which sets the other side of thrust. So that roller bearing in the back sets reverse thrust. And the bearing that's going to be in the front that I'll show you here later is going to set the front thrust on the camshaft.